It's such a remarkable achievement, considered as an achievement of the human race as a whole. Cooperation from so many different parts of the world, and all driven by our curiosity about how nature works. It's, uh, it's a magnificent achievement. Uh, I mean, in the old days, people tried at the scale of that time to do such things with a somewhat different motivation. Stonehenge and cathedrals and so on and so on were also immense works for their time. But the, now it's it, the driving force is trying to understand our universe. And that's extremely impressive. That we're willing to devote that much ingenuity and that much labor and uh, in general to uh, afford uh, that amount of attention, devote that amount of attention to uh, this extraordinary enterprise. Well, I don't know that I would bet. I think that the mechanism which so many people proposed, Peter Higgs among many others, that mechanism, uh, I think, must be responsible for the generation of masses. It's what I used to call a soft mass mechanism, one that doesn't interfere with uh, the uh, disappearance of infinite corrections and so on and so on. Uh, I think that mechanism must be right. It's very hard to believe that it could be wrong. But as to there being one boson that, that uh, results from this Higgs process, that's not quite so certain because there could be more than one, in which case the experimental result would be different and they might not, have, uh, they might not be looking for it in the, in the right way for, for that. They certainly are looking in the right way for the single Higgs boson, if that turns out to be right. Uh, but there might be some more complicated version of the Higgs process, in case it turns out it's not there. But I, I suppose it's more, much more likely than not that it is there. It was not really a collaboration. I had written a brief note calling attention to the ideas. There were seven experiments, I think, that contradicted our theory. And under many conditions, one might have said, well, if those, the seven experiments that show this wrong, it must be wrong. But it was so beautiful and so simple and so elegant that we concluded it was right anyway. And in fact, all those experiments were wrong. <laughs> Either wrong or wrongly interpreted. In any case, they didn't disprove the idea. But it's fascinating that uh, beauty and elegance can be a successful criterion for judging a theory in fundamental physics. Why should that be so? And I've written a paper about that. Well, one might argue that. One might argue that. That's possible. Uh, supersymmetry would be very helpful in many ways. It turns out to be right. Uh, when you have large mass ratios, in a quantum field theory. Heavy particles versus light ones and the same, playing the same sorts of roles. It's very difficult when you calculate uh, to all the orders of perturbation theory, when you calculate uh, fairly exactly what happens, uh, it's very hard to keep those ratios large. They tend to, masses tend to approach each other. Uh, and, uh, but this doesn't happen if you have broken supersymmetry, provided the breaking isn't too bad, provided the violation of supersymmetry isn't too serious. So there's this great hope among theorists